Xin Chow. All right, I've tried to shoot this video a few times. What bike is right for you in Saigon, Vietnam? And it has not been particularly an easy video to shoot as there's new management at Golden River. And if I have a camera out in the basement, they come rip roaring at me for no reason. And I'm like filming my own bikes and explaining about my bikes. I'm not even filming other people's bikes, but they come running at me. So, yeah. This is gonna be a video that people are anticipating. It is, which bike is right for you in Vietnam? Should you get a scooter? Should you get a motorcycle? What's proper for you? So we're gonna go over all that information in this video. It may be a long one because I have a lot of stuff to cover, so come join me. People say I don't need poses, but thumbnails are important, and I'm not trying to have a girl in every single thumbnail that I'm hunting for the whole video that detours me from making a great video. So, man, is it hot out. Woo! So first off, I can make decisions really quick for you on this one. Motorcycle or scooter? So. The first way to determine if you should go for a motorcycle or a scooter is what is your riding experience before moving here? There's an Airblade over here. We'll talk about the Airblade in a little bit. Very popular bike. That's a smaller 125 one. But the big dog ones cost all the way up to 50 million for an Airblade. Excellent bike. You can get them pretty good secondhand. An Airblade is a fantastic scooter for someone that's really never ridden a bike. It's twist and go, it's automatic. Let me finish with where I was at my first point though. So a motorcycle should only be for someone in Saigon that's had experience riding before you came here. Meaning you have a motorcycle license in your country of origin, you've owned a motorcycle, and you have considerable experience with more air blades. As you can see, like, air blades. It's a lead. That's an air blade, I think. No, it's a Vararo. There's a Vision, Honda Vision's very popular too. These are all scooters, and these are all twist and go style scooters, meaning they're just gas. So for a first time rider, that's what you want. You want a twist and go. You want a Honda Vision. I would recommend a Honda for the scooter, any kind of really Honda that's completely automatic, Vision, Airblade, etc. Waves are not automatic. I think they've got the, the manual on them, so it might be a little bit more difficult for you to drive. But again, back to the first point, I keep getting detoured because I keep seeing all the bikes. I would almost always say, no motorcycle, no experience. Scooter, no experience. Automatic, twist and go. What scooter you get really isn't that dependent, but more so on your budget. Uh, we've got all kinds of different ones here. We've got Visions, Airblades, uh, Airblade, Wave, 150 Yamaha, RSX Wave, Wave S, Lead, Wave, Vision, Vision. As you can see, Vision's very popular. It's a more affordable twist and go Honda. So I think that's what Win Win had before we sold it and got her bike. Here's an SH. This is a more expensive, like their kind of more premium model of the Honda. Again, any one of these bikes are really good for First time users putting around, learning how to actually drive a scooter and things like this. So these are the kind of bikes I'd recommend if you have zero experience. And these are all reliable bikes, like a Vision, an Airblade, any one of those you can't go bad with at all. An Exciter, a Yamaha Exciter, also a great bike if you want a little bit more speed. Waves are gonna be cheaper, so Waves are much more affordable, new style bike. If I do remember right, it does have, I think it's got the Quonky like one, two transmission so you shift up yeah so that's what that is over there the shifter right there so these are cheaper though you can get these for like 15 million almost brand new or lightly used and an air blade like a proper big air blade not just a blade like a brand new air blade can cost 55 60 million i want to say so like two thousand bucks but if that's all you're going to ride you're never going to switch to a motorcycle it's a great great purchase that you can get second hand at even a better deal and people have been asking me like, where do you get a secondhand bike? They're literally all over Saigon. Every district has one. If you go back and, and look at my motorcycle videos when I'm looking for them, they all had scooters and shit everywhere there too. So all my old videos on buying a motorcycle and stuff like this has that stuff in there. So I'm not gonna reshoot that for this video. RSX, RSX, a lot of wave RSXs. Fun fact, Honda 
used Acura and put the RSX out in America, a car. I don't know if that's where they got it from. A Vision, more Visions. So you've got a lot of air blades, a lot of Visions. Here's a Cub, it's a Honda Cub. It's an old one, but they are very reliable. Uh, you can get those pretty affordably too. The new Cub though, if you get like a brand new one, it's $4,000, it's like 100 million. So it's pretty expensive, but it's pretty cool, like vintage. Here's an SH up here, so it's a pretty expensive bike. And 50 to 100 million, depending on how big of a CC SH bike you get. So we've kind of gone over the scooters. You can really get these kind of anywhere around Vietnam. There's particular areas. I'll actually list streets and stuff, Xin Chao. I'll actually list streets and stuff where I recommend that you go to go and look for these uh, used bikes. And if you don't know anything about mechanics, I highly recommend you find someone that knows something about it and go with them to go look at used bikes. And if you're not comfortable with buying a used bike and you don't want to worry about it or have zero knowledge and no one to go test drive a bike with you, buy brand new. Uh, for motorcycles, I almost always recommend buy brand new, unless you want to be taking that thing to the shop all the time. You never know uh, when somebody changed the oil on something or if it's a cafe racer that's hatched together with like a China motor and a bunch of different parts. You could just be in the shop all the time with that thing. It might look cool, but it's not going to be cool that you got to go to the, to the place you bought it every two weeks and get something fixed. The nickel and diming on that adds up eventually. So we've covered scooters. I've given you my honest opinion on what you should do with the scooter. Do I have a preferred scooter? I would say if you want a fast one, get an Exciter Yamaha with the 155 uh, CC big motor in it. Uh, SHs are pretty good. PCXs are really good. PCX, if you're a big guy, I haven't seen one yet. I've been looking out for one. That's why I'm walking on the street because there's lots of people parked at stores and stuff. But a PCX is really designed well for, for bigger guys. Uh, if you've got a big frame, look at a PCX. They're a little bit more expensive. But as I said, they're accommodable to a taller guy that's a bigger fella. That is the bike that I recommend to a lot of people is the PCX. So if you don't know what that is, just Google PCX scooter. They'll come right up. And then uh, other places you can look for, for bikes used is on Facebook Marketplace. They're all over. It's very easy. Uh, I usually don't recommend much on Facebook because it's a super toxic place, especially like Facebook Vietnam and Saigon groups. Like it's just a bunch of full of uh, hatred filled guys on there. But as far as getting like a scooter or something, that's okay to use it. Airblade. So we've been seeing the most of Airblades, Visions, and Leads from, from the area we've been walking around in now. Those seem to be the dominating bikes. Those are all automatic twist and go bikes. All these cell phone places always use girls like this. Short skirts, you know, younger. Here's a Cub. Looks like a Cub ripoff though. And this is a Cub copy. Yeah. So let's get into motorcycles. Let's talk about motorcycles, CCs, and pricing. So as you get past 300 cc's, the pricing of motorcycles gets absolutely insane. It goes by like 1.5 over, like 1.5 times over what it would be in your country to, you get up to 600 cc's and, and pass there five times what it's worth. Like crazy astronomical amounts of money uh, of way more than what it's actually like worth. So like... I can't even remember off. Well, so the the new CBR 650, which is like about this is the ZX25R. He put some new uh, fender flares and got the gas tank painted, I think, white. So this is what I'd recommend if you want to go fast. Here is the MT15, my bike. Wonderful bike, absolutely great for beginners. I forgot the Honda Grom, probably the easiest motorcycle to commute in. You've got a Vespa over here, which is overpriced garbage. And then I think this is a Z400. So this is also a very popular bike. If you want a bit more speed and you're a pretty capable rider, the Z400's got some power to it and it gives you a comfortable riding position. Let me show you over here. The front end's just really ugly. Not much you can do about that. The MT15 and the MTs have the best front end. And then over here, 
we have the Honda 650 and the most atrocious wrap I've ever seen in my whole life. So the CBR 650R. So yeah, that's a bit of the high-end motorcycles I talked about in the video. So I thought I'd put this in here so you could have some perspective. A 68 horsepower. There's one in my garage now. So you got to put some stupid wrap on it. It looks ridiculous. Uh, that goes for like 210 million with tax, VAT, and all that stuff. So around like eight, nine thousand dollars for uh, a 650. That's still like a one cylinder. I think it's a one or a two cylinder. It's not really a proper 600 in my opinion. That's like the most affordable 650 that I know of. Kawasaki always has, always also has one that's the same price. MT-03s, you can get like older ones of brand new stock that are a few years old, maybe 2019, 2018. You can get an MT-03 for around 100 to 110 million, which is around four or $5,000 for a 300cc, which is a pretty good deal. Um, my bike, the, the MT-15, which is 155 cc here's an exciter gp so this is a much faster uh scooter than a lot of other ones they make one with 155 though that's pretty quick the yamaha now my bike the yamaha mt15 it's 155 cc it's a pure glory 18 horsepower and 17 foot pounds of torque she is a machine of speed that cost me around all said and done with tax vat like around 90 million I think it was 88 million, so a little under $4,000. And then once you start jumping up, like the next bike I'm gonna get is a Kawasaki ZX25R. And that bike costs 200 million with tax and VAT. So I'm gonna spend about 8,000 for that bike. And then like I said, you start going to 1,000 cc's and stuff, they're, they're costing like a billion, some two billion, three billion, four billion, Ducatis are five billion. Uh, KTM 390 I've also priced out any of the motorcycles you want to see just type in fat and broke KTM fat and broke Yamaha fat and broke Honda fat and broke Kawasaki and all that information is there I've priced out pretty much every bike Ducati and BMW will not let me film nor do they give you a price unless you're serious about buying so those I cannot get you guys on film unfortunately although I think people looking at this video wanting to spend hundred thousand dollars almost two hundred thousand dollars in some instances on a sports bike here I don't see that anybody's watching my channel for that it's possible but as far as I would go if you're a very experienced rider and you ride or want to ride around fast in in Saigon and you're you're headstrong about getting a nice bigger CC motorcycle I'd go with either of the 650s from Honda or Kawasaki they're very affordable or I'd go with the Ninja ZX 25R if you don't know what a ZX25R is, it actually has an inline four cylinder in it. That's 250 cc's. It produces a stout 58 horsepower, which is very impressive for a smaller 250 cc engine. It sounds like a fully proper motorcycle, not uh, these weird hybrid ones that are out now that have two cylinders that just don't quite sound like a motorcycle. Uh, MT-03 is a great bike, MT-15. R-15 is also a pretty good bike. Again, it's pretty slow. It's only got like 20 horsepower. You're not really gonna feel like you're going too fast. Um, those are very affordable. You can get those, an R15, if anywhere from 75 to 85 million. Uh, so those are pretty good deals on those. Um, R3s are about 120 million used and about 200 million new. And again, that has the weird one or two cylinder. It doesn't really quite sound that great. If I was going to go that route, ZX25R all day long. We're one of the few countries that you can get a ZX25R in. And then there's a whole nother field of adventure bikes. So if you're going to be the dude driving across the whole country and shit, you know, Honda's got the XLR, I think 150, that's the real popular expat special. That's what all the places rent here for people that are going across the country. And to be honest with you, you don't really need more than 150 cc's. If you want to see the bigger ones priced out, as far as the adventure bikes go, they're all in the videos I just talked about. I'll actually try to put all the uh, links for all those different places in this video under the description. So I actually will do that, so look in the description. If I can use any of the footage that I recorded downstairs in my basement, I'll try to use that. Um, 
like I said, high-end big thousand cc bikes are extremely, extremely expensive. They're really a flex thing here, and there's nowhere to use a thousand cc's. I wouldn't, you could never see me recommend anyone past the 650 here for Saigon. Because where are you gonna go that fast? Where are you gonna use all that power in Saigon? And you have to understand that there's not a lot of like crazy death crashes in Saigon because you're never going that fast. So I don't know where you would ever really use all the power of, you know, a 1000 cc bike here. Like a lot of the Vietnamese guys that buy the 1000 cc bikes here, they go on street racing and shit. And they've been really busting down on them lately. And then they take your bike away and charge you like 20, 30 million to go get it back. So unless you want to be part of some underground racing scene that you probably won't even get into because it's all Vietnamese run, I really couldn't uh, recommend buying something like that. For, for most of you guys that have been avid riders motorcycle-wise, uh, MT-03 Yamaha or MT-15 would be perfectly sufficed bikes. If you have to have a sports bike, R15, R3, Honda 650, Kawasaki 650, Kawasaki 250. I mean, any one of those would be pretty good for, for doing your thing. If you want a real sounding bike, the Kawasaki 250 is going to sound like an actual big CC sports bike. And then as far as aftermarket stuff goes, almost all the exhaust is fake here. You have to kind of find a reputable dealership that's willing to order real parts from out of country and get them shipped to the dealership. And they'll even include that in the price uh, if you want, so. I've tried to give you as much information on this as I can. If you are still at home and you still have time before you move here and you've never taken a motorcycle class or course, find something in your area, buy a scooter for a little while. Scooters are easy to resell in America and they often hold their value. Buy a used one, start practicing that thing around your neighborhood right now so you have some experience. You don't need a fast bike here though. Don't waste a bunch of money on a motorcycle. That's what I'm trying to stress very hardly in this video. Like I said, the biggest I'll ever go here is, is the ZX25R, 250 cc. Because I see there's nowhere to go. And I'm a two, 25 minute rider at tops. Occasionally I ride longer than 40 minutes. I have no desire to go have itchy boots and go drive around the country and shit. There's so many other YouTubers that do that. Plus riding a bike that long is not that comfortable. I have no desire to, to go conquer a high long loop and all that shit. So many other people have already done that as well. Maybe one day we'll get over there, but I'm not gonna be driving my bike there. I'll go buy it and go rent something. Um, so it's a different story if you're trying to traverse all around Vietnam. There's all kinds of adventure bikes for that. And there's a bunch of other channels that can recommend you on the type of bike to explore. Uh, I think the XL 150, the Honda though, is, is pretty much the most rented and used one for that kind of circumstances. I would not get caught up in trying to have a fancy, expensive, big CC sports bike here though. It's not going to be comfortable for commuting. You know, we commute. I usually drive 10 minutes to get her, 10 minutes to go home. Sometimes we go back to her house, which is 20 minutes away. So for me, the ZX25R will be ideal, and I'm in no hurry to get it. I'm still happy with my MT-15. So I hope you guys found this video informative and helpful. If you guys want to add anything that are watching this, drop it in the comment section. If you did like the video, subscribe. That would be really awesome. If you didn't like it, don't subscribe. Uh, don't recommend this channel, and you'll never see my face again. Thank you guys for watching. Stay frosty. See you on the next one. Peace out.